what's going on, you guys? Like, what you got to the DC TV talk? It's your boy Big Dog back with a review for The Flash Crisis on Infinite Earth Part 3. This probably, if I'm just being, I think this is the best episode of the crossover so far because I think it was probably the most balanced, well balanced, and and it probably like it hit certain moments, and I think a lot of stuff seemed to make sense other than like I think I feel like episode two. It's kind of, you know what I'm saying, not all over the place, but it's just a little bit wonky, a little bit, but it's still good, but I think this definitely was the best episode of, cross, of uh, this of this crossover so far, because we start off on the ship, and hey, this, the, the Earth starts just get wiped out left and right, okay, I don't know how many there were, but apparently it was a, in the, a lot, there was a lot of them, okay, because we get, one thing, Probably favorite part of the episode. Probably one of the all-time greatest moments of all of the Flash is seeing Lucifer Morningstar. And I'm, I want to talk about that, but I feel like I just skipped the whole part where we actually see Dig finally like, yo, what what happened? And and like that was pretty sad because you know you know how close Dig and all of it was, and then the fact that they're trying to bring back Dig like. You know what that does, but then he kind of just got on board. He just kind of like let it go, like yeah, I kind of miss him too. So yeah, let's go ahead and do this. So they enlist the help, of course. We know they enlist the help of John Constantine. They go to travel to Earth six six six, which we uh come up on Lucifer more and stuff. If you don't know, you guys don't know. Huge Lucifer fan. Review all the seasons. Got uh reviews for a lot of seasons and and the trailer reactions, all of that. So go, go check that out. But we see him. Granted, now where Lucifer's at in this episode is not where he's at in the show. If you, if you watch the show, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But like seeing him flirting with Mia, asking Mia what she wants, then she said, it's like, I just want my dad. He's like, oh, daddy probably should have started off with that. Like he flirted with Mia and John in the exact same light. Like it's, 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 it's crazy. Like that's. Tom, well, uh, I think it's Tom Welling. I, I'll be honestly if it's Tom Welling as well. Lucifer is great. The guy who plays him is absolutely phenomenal in that role. When they the back and forth with him, it's something you kind of like. Can we? We want you want to see more. Just plain or something. You want to see more of it, okay? And I really, really hope we do one day. Nonetheless, he gives like them the past to Purgatory. Which Purgatory, and it's like for Oliver is Leanne Yu. It's the person that uh, pe people send themselves to the, the, the worst place that they probably imagine. Like, hey, they have to go convince him, like, who they are and bring him back. And this is where we get like one of the biggest moments, I think, of the episode and probably of the cross crossover so far is the fact that he meets Spectre. And instead of going back, he accepts becoming the new Spectre. If you know who Spectre is, it's like a very, very powerful, like super powerful character in the DC universe. And if Oliver, if that's, who, if that's who Oliver is about to become, I think instead of, because in the comics, like Green Lantern ended up became, becoming Spectre and there's another guy, uh, the guy in the episode, I can't think of his name on top of my head, but he became Spectre. And like I said, Green Lantern became Spectre. So instead of Green Lantern, so we don't have one in this universe, we're gonna have the Green Arrow become Spectre. Granted, he's just on like this omnipotent being who needs a physical host and to survive in like the physical world. Great. Like that's completely caught me off guard. Granted, because I haven't I haven't finished reading Christ on Infinite Earth yet, so I didn't know that was a part of it. And now I do. And this is a great part. Also, we have we see, we go to like where the anti monitor is like the power behind the anti monitor and the waves. And, and we see that um, Earth 90's Barry Allen uh, is running on the treadmill. He's the person generating the power for it. But if they, they stop it, and then, hey, of course, it's a fair safe, all the universe can be destroyed at once. It's like, hey, you know, I can take my time doing this, or I can just do it all at once. And I think. And there was a reason I think that, like, hey, because I'm in your mind, you probably think, like, well, why don't he just do it all at once? I think the, 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 him getting all the power from the universes being deleted, I mean, like, being erased at once is probably overwhelming. So that's why yeah, they're being erased one at a time. And it's more manageable to, like, you know what I'm saying, gain power like that. So that makes sense. Now, introduced, uh, Incoming Black Lightning, which I thought he, the way he 
reacted when he first came through. Kind of like pretty rational feeling. Like, like what happened to my family? Who are you guys? What's going on? And he starts like a little fight. Which, like him and Flash throw lightning bolts at each other, which is a very good scene. And like, oh, I just can't. I got. I, I had a review for Black Lightning that went up today. I'm trying to, I, I didn't really like how they did the episode of Black Lightning, but the way they used him in the crossover was very good, okay? And I think he's in it. He's in two episodes, so, so I don't think we have seen the last of him. I think he's probably either being... I don't think he's in episode four, but I think he's definitely in episode five. And that's going to be like the finale. We're probably going to have all the heroes. I wonder like how many exactly we're going to get in like one shot. Nonetheless, we have... Uh, more stuff going on because it, it's time for Barry to run. And this seemed like, kind of seemed like a cop out in a certain sense. It was like, hey, Barry Allen Flash dies. And Barry Allen Flash does die in this episode. Just not the one we thought of. It was like, oh, well. Because, but I, I feel like this is a question we've asked. Like, there are many other Flashes. Like, no, this isn't meant for them. And like, I'm like, so it's like, is that not was that not true? You know, that's the only that was the only problem I had to that part. It wasn't really a problem, but just kinda like, hmm, you kinda set this up and then you just kinda like, ah yeah, nah, that's not actually how it was. So kinda word not word, but I'm wondering about that. Episode then we get back to the ship. I'm trying to make sure I don't forget anything. We have the conscious thing stuff with Carr and uh uh, and Bad Girl, bad, not Bad Girl, Bad Woman, when she's like telling Carl, like, you can't use the Book of Destiny. And like, she was prepared to fight her. That whole thing, when they both clenched their fists, I was like, this isn't Batman versus Superman, but it's close enough. Like, <laughs> it's close enough. And, like, she had to, granted, Carl was probably still gonna be the hell out of her because the only thing she had was that one kryptonite thing. Carl get that away from her and then punches her. Yeah, she pretty much dead. <laughs> Dead at that point. Well, like, yeah, I enjoyed that, just like the little back and forth. And it just sort of shot some characters, like the shot with, with uh, Supergirl and Batwoman, that shot was really good. And the shot with uh, Black Lightning and the Flash shaking hands, it's just really good. It's just really good. And uh, on to, like, basically, like the, the end of the episode where we have everybody's just back on the jump ship. Like, we know who uh we went got Dr. Choi. That was I don't know exactly what his purpose is, but apparently it's gonna be something. Um everybody's back and Lila shows up and everybody's just looking like, man, she been gone this whole time. Like what is happening? Like somebody right about this. Mm. <laughs> and she's like answer monitor of course is controlled her. she whoops Superman ass. She pretty much was like clenching her fist submits everybody else and the only person at that point can take on is the answer i mean is the monitor he dies with a straight dragon straight out of dragon ball the kamehameha versus a, a big bang thing going on and they're just going back and forth with like the key blast basically and she gets up a hand and wins what well, i don't know if it's really her or it's just an anti, anti monitor controlling her so i'm pretty sure she's powered by him Considering the fact that all Earths are gone except for one, there's no question that he would be stronger. You know what I'm saying? Because he he's grabbing all this power. Now, they I didn't think they were going. All the Earths are gone. <laughs> all of them. mine, but like mine, was completely blown. I'm like, I, I'm not gonna do that. They're gonna keep killing off a lot of a lot of characters died. It's, and I don't think after this, the multiverse is over with. There's no longer multiverse. I think we would just have a singular type thing, which is going to be insane because if you do that, now everybody, because I think that's how the multiverse ends. And I think that's how, I don't want to say it. I'm not, not going to get that way because it might be a spoiler. And I'm, and I'm not certain because now I have time to actually finish Christ on the Infinite Earths because, like, we the next episode is on January 14th. So I have time to finish it and I know more. But, like, right now, I don't want to give you guys any speculation and that speculation might be spoiler. <laughs> oh, man, I just had to talk about Lex, though. Lex played everybody. Like, the last people were left and that, that, that Pariah sent away until like the space where the anti-monitor couldn't get them. 
or the, the four paragons, I mean the seven paragons, Supergirl, Flash, Batwoman, uh, Jean Jones, uh, Superman, Dr. Troy, and Sarah Lance. But Lex Luthor changed <laughs> Superman's name for his. And now he's one of the seven prayer guys. So now he's going to have to try to help save the multiverse. Uh, crazy. In genius. Genius way of thinking. Never would have thought about it. Never saw that happen in a million years. When the Superman died, I'm just thinking about the dial explode or something. Turns into Lex and Lex tells what he did. Perfect way to cap out the episode. That cliffhanger was great. Can't wait to see where we go with the next episode. Okay, even though we got a month and some change before we get there, I think the, cro the crossover just like kicked up to like the next level. And I'm loving it. So, uh, you guys, let me know what you thought about this episode. What was your favorite part of the crossover so far? Hit that like button, subscribe to my channel. I'll catch up with you guys later.